Prince of Persia, the sands of time, defy the canon. Wait, that's not it. Defy the future. The main reason I went to watch this movie is that I am a huge fan of the entire series. I own all the games, these are the only ones I have covers for, but this is an edition that has all three of the new trilogy, and no, I have no idea why they're in the wrong order. But I've played both trilogies, and I'm waiting for an acquaintance of mine to send me the 2008 game, I think, just titled Prince of Persia, as well as the Wii-exclusive Prince of Persia Rival Swords. And yes, I know that's just the two thrones only for the Wii. That's how much I love these games. I honestly can't tell you how you'll feel about this movie if you aren't already a fan of the games. But I can venture a guess. I'd say you'd probably have about the same reaction. Meaning, you might like some parts here and there, but on the whole it's just kind of meh. This thing is very disney and it kind of only got the bad parts of the disney It didn't get to have the qualities of a classic that will be remembered for generations to come. It did, however, get all the playing it safe that we also saw with the new Alice in Wonderland movie. You know what this tastes like? Blandness. Whilst Alice in Wonderland at least had Tim Burton, who always gives us something interesting visually, this has... Mike Newell, whoever the heck that is. Well, he directed Mona Lisa Smile, and that was okay, I guess. I haven't seen his Harry Potter movie. I know, I know. I'm not a fantasy fan. I haven't watched any of the Harry Potter movies, nor read any of the books. If you don't like that, you can just go ahead and put a hex on... Nice try. I have a magic barrier. Anyway, he seems quite uncomfortable with this type of flick. For a considerable portion of the fighting and the parkour, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. And in general, the action, he shoots and cuts it in a very confusing way. It's also worth mentioning that the fights are, with fairly few exceptions, criminally short. Honestly, I do not remember the last time I watched an action movie that so consistently ended the fight scene just as it was getting interesting. In general, the cinematography is just not that interesting. I mean, this somehow manages to not produce a single memorable, breathtaking image. I wouldn't have thought that was possible. This was shot in Morocco. Even crappy family vacation tapes shot in Morocco would look amazing. Like, you're watching it on playback and going, Yeah, yeah, I see, so that's you in the house, huh? Oh, they have furniture there too. Wow! That's Morocco? I gotta go there sometime. Seriously, if a kid in Morocco set his camera phone to photograph something on a three second delay and then threw it through the air, the image that would come out would probably be more enticing and spellbinding than any visual you see in. The CGI looks pretty good, though it's fairly quickly forgotten because there is no emotional impact behind any of it. The characters are just barely there. Other than the two leads, very few of the characters actually stand out. And the leads kind of have to stand out because they're in most of the movie. Their personalities are mainly limited to trying to outdo each other in how annoying they can be. Which, ironically enough, didn't actually bother me because they were so flat and, and dull that I actually managed to not find them irritating. Somehow. There's some obvious miscasting. Gyllenhaal was given the role because he attracts an audience. Also, I'd have to say, Arterton isn't quite as stunning as the reactions to her suggest her to be. Every now and then in this, Kingsley forgets how to act, and Molina looks distractingly like Jack Sparrow, probably to remind people of Pirates of the Caribbean movies. The dialogue is flat and uninspired. The film is quite predictable. The plot offers no real surprises. About half the humor falls flat. As for sequels, there certainly is room for them. Personally, I think they ought to reboot the film series before they continue it, but if not, at least fix the casting and hire a director who doesn't confuse the lens for the viewfinder. I mean, at least try to cast someone who looks like they come from that region. Better still, 
someone who does come from that region. Seriously, Body of Lies did it, The Kingdom did it. Both of those could somewhat be construed as Hollywood. Seriously, Disney, are you not willing to take more chances than the guy who recently remade one of his more popular films just under a new name? <laughs> the spirit of the games is somewhat present here and there. I tried to fix the lighting. Looks almost heavenly, doesn't it? I guess the Go-Go's were right. Heaven is a place on Earth. Okay, finally, I'm gonna go over a couple of things that some fans of the games might want to know before watching the movie. First off, Pharaoh. Tamina is essentially the movie version of Pharaoh with some changes. She's almost as willing to show cleavage as the game version was. The film contains elements of all three games of the trilogy. And if you want to know what the personality of the prince is, which of the three games of the recent trilogy it corresponds to, if it's like in the sands of time where he's innocent and emo, like Warrior Within where he's angry and emo, or like the two thrones in which he's gradually maturing and emo, well, he really doesn't have a lot of personality. I guess mostly innocent and emo. Although I'm really not sure they quite captured the emo, you know? Anyway, that was my spoiler free review of Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. I hope you enjoyed it. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna have to go kill some sand creatures, recharge this thing, and rewind about the last two hours of my life.